Hi, so I want to talk about ARC. What is ARC? So you've probably seen this a lot with uh, iOS and uh, macOS projects. And uh, if you haven't heard, uh, ARC stands for Automatic Reference Counting. And essentially what that referring to is that whenever you create an object inside of the heap, or if you remember, one of the things that happens when you go to uh, instantiate a, a, a new object in Objective-C it gets created and put into the heap. And in order to be able to manage that memory, it used to be in C++ and C, you'd have to you know, free up or delete that memory once you were done with it. And one of the things they did with uh, Objective-C uh, and Next Step and, uh, and Mac OS early on was they came up with this concept of retain and release cycles, right? So if you're gonna be putting uh, a uh, object onto, let's say, the, the heap, there's a method you could call on NS object that's called retain. And every time you call retain on that object, it actually incremented a value by uh, like an integer value up like one. So let's say you retain it once, a second time it would get one, two. And so the idea there is that every single time that somebody needed that object or a process needed that object, you could bump up uh, the retain count, and then as you didn't need it, you would call release, and that would decrement it by one. And memory management's always been kind of a, a pain for, uh, for software engineers. And there were programming languages that were starting to become pretty popular, like Java, as an example, in the 90s, which had a garbage collection built into it. And so garbage collectors are actually really nice because there's a runtime process that essentially will go through and manage your memory for you. Uh, there's also drawbacks with uh, garbage collection. Usually uh, there's some type of you know, run cycle that has to go through and dispose of unused uh, memory when it's no longer needed by the application. And sometimes that can be efficient, sometimes it's not. And initially Apple tried to create a, uh, a garbage collector to use with, uh, with Mac OS. And they actually did release a, uh, an, uh, a garbage collector around the time Objective-C 2.0 came out. But they never did it for, for iOS, and there was always a beef with the iOS developers. It's like, well, we'd like to have garbage collection too, but they're afraid it they would degrade the performance of the phone too much, so Apple never implemented it. But they came up with a really nice compromise, and that is automatic, automatic reference count. So essentially what that means is when you go and you write your code, let's say you go and you instantiate a, uh, um, uh, an object that's based off of NS object, what the compiler will do now, and this is due in part to the changes they made when they added uh, LLVM to the tools they use for, for building software. What they wind up doing was uh, they essentially, they took that reference counting where you would do the retain, you would do release, and there's also one called auto release. And they built that into the compiler. So when you go to compile your code, it's automatically going in there and adding the retain and the release into your code when you go to compile it. Now, that's great, but it doesn't mean that we don't have to worry about memory management. Uh, it's, memory management is something, something you still have to worry about when you're doing iOS and macOS development. So I'll be doing a, a, some future videos kind of showing you what you have to do. You'll probably wind up seeing keywords like weak and strong uh, in Swift and in Objective-C. And that's where you have to start worrying about reference counting. It really refers to when you have sort of a circular dependency in your object graph. So if you have object A over here and then you have object B over here, you can have a property on object A that you can store object B on. But you can also do the same thing with object B. Object B can have a property which will maintain a reference back to object A. And that's where you start running into problems with, it's like, okay, well, who owns what? And uh, when is it okay to release this? And uh, there'll be some, uh, some future videos I do showing basically how you can handle that as a, as a developer. So with that, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, if you want, please subscribe to this channel. We'll have a lot more videos like this coming up. Thank you.